Flashback Japan's tutorial series, Creator's View, features a Japanese video director, Kutaro Takano, to provide an in-depth review and explanation of Twixter from Revision FX on how to utilize the Twixter Pro features to create speed changes in footage. Shooting footage with an actual high-speed camera is costly. Being able to create the same effect with the plugin after the shooting is revolutionary. However, Twixter emulates the high-speed effect and not all footage is suitable for this effect. It is important to choose the right footage and apply appropriate effect controls to maximize the effect of Twixter. We asked Mr. Takano to show us how to choose the appropriate source footage and how to apply Twixter properly to create a realistic high-speed effect. In part one, we examine what kind of source movie works best with Twixter. Since the fundamental of Twixter is that in the case of creating slow motion, it will morph frames to compensate for necessary frames. So the suitable footage for the in-betweening would be clean footage without partial transparencies such as motion blurring. You can see in this example where the footage is shot at a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second that the footage has more blur than this next shot that was shot at one one thousandth of a second. You can see that shooting at a faster shutter speed gives you a much sharper result. This is better footage to use with Twixter to get the best results. Now let's see how to apply Twixter Pro. We started a new project and adjust the settings to make the new length that's longer than the original material since we're slowing the footage down. We add a new solid and apply Twixter Pro to the solid. Inside the effect controls for Twixter, we select the color source under the source control. We also have to make sure that the input frame rate matches the original frame rate of the input footage. We can choose the type of frame interpretation and we will choose motion weighted blend. Also the type of warping under the output control. And we chose inverse with smart blend. We're going to leave everything else on the default settings except for the speed. We're going to use speed percentage instead of frame number and knowing that 100% is normal or real time, we're going to slow down to 1%. You can see that we're getting some warping here and that's because Twixter has a hard time knowing that these are separate planes. We would have a better result if Twixter could retime each plane separate. So that's what we can do with Twixter Pro. Up to now we were using just the basic features of Twixter, but we see that sometimes we have more complex shots so we can use some of the additional features that the Pro version offers, like layers. We will separate the foreground from the background by using a matte layer. In Twixter Pro we can have up to three additional matte layers. We could get the roto from an external source like Mocha, or we could use the mask drawing tools in After Effects, or in this case, we will use a roto brush to create the mat. I'm going to fast forward through the roto creation since it isn't a roto brush tutorial. We render the mat out and then we just bring it back in as a layer and add it to our comp. Now we can just go to the foreground one settings in Twixter Pro and select the mask to layer. We select the foreground one matte channel as the alpha of mask two. If we go to the display and choose foreground one twixtered, you'll see that it's now being twixtered as a separate layer to the background using the alpha channel to separate the two layers. This way twixter will know the difference between the foreground and the background planes and this will give us better result with less warping. Now we can put the display back on twixtered output and see a ramp preview of our new Twixtered result. We can jump back into Premiere and see our new Twixtered shot in context with the rest of the edit. You can see it's a much better result now that we've separated the foreground from the background using Twixter Pro. In this next section, we will see more features of Twixter Pro. In the case of fast-moving water going the direction that gravity intended, 
like a waterfall, river, or water from the tap, you may not have great results with Twixter. If the water flows from bottom to top, however, that is movement of water in the opposite direction to gravity, like a splash from a puddle, you will get a good high speed effect. The examples you see here of the puddle splashes are suitable choices for Twixter Pro. If we scrub back and forth, I can see that this tree in the background might cause a problem with warping since the water overlaps the background. But we can go ahead and apply Twixter Pro and see how to use some of the advanced features in Twixter Pro to help problems like this. We can use Twixter in Premiere Pro, but in this case we'll jump into After Effects to work on that last shot that we're going to apply Twixter Pro to. We can drag our clip to start a new project. Then we can go to Settings and extend the length of the project to compensate for the retiming. We can add a new solid as we've seen before and apply Twixter Pro to the solid. We pick the color source, which is the original footage. We change the frame rate to be the same as the original input frame rate. That's 23.976. For the output control, we chose the frame interp, and in this case, we pick motion weighted blend. We are choosing inverse with smart blend for warping type. For speed, we keep it on speed percentage and we'll slow it way down to 1%. If we do a RAM preview now, we can see that we're having some trouble in the background where Twixter doesn't see the difference between the foreground and background. So we're going to help Twixter out a bit by drawing a mask to separate the layers and that will eliminate the warping that we're getting here. We can start by drawing a mask for the area that we want to separate. We're using the drawing tools in After Effects for this. In this case it's pretty simple. We don't even need to animate the shape. We can see that this will work for the duration of the shot. We just go to the main BG layer settings and main BG sensitivity and go to the first mask for BG and select the mask that we just created as both the first mask and the last mask. Now if we do a ramp preview we can see that we have a much better result. In this last section we can take a look at some additional benefits to using Twixter Pro over Twixter. We've already created the project and made it longer than the original and added a solid since we've already seen how to do that twice. For this one we see that we have only two frames that we want to make a three second clip out of. These are our two frames that we're toggling between. If we just use Twixter and slow it to 20% you can see that we have some warping. You can see the background is having problems especially where the poles are warping on both sides of the guy. We also have some issues down by his shoes. This is a good shot to use the Pro version with as we can definitely use the mask features. We can separate the layers. It's also a good idea to shoot a clean plate of the background for situations like this to use for cleanup. We can divide this into layers, the background and lower body and then the waist up and the shoes. We can use the roto brush in After Effects and since it's only two frames it should be pretty easy. Once we have the roto finished, we render it out with an alpha channel. Reminder, Twixter Pro is applied to your solid. In the effect controls for Twixter Pro, we can go to the FG1 settings and select mask A.mov, which is the roto brush plus alpha channel two frame mat that we rendered out in the previous step. We also select the alpha for the FG1 mat channel. Also note, in order to take two frames and retime to three seconds, we used the frame number option for the speed and animated it and put a keyframe with frame one at the beginning and frame two at the end. Now you can see a quick RAM preview of the top section twixtered. We just add a mask to the bottom of the section to feather it back into the base layer for a smooth transition. Okay, moving on to the shoes now. We can use the roto brush again to create a mask for the two frames. We can render them out and then add it back into our project. We can turn the visibility off and now we go to the Twixter settings for the shoes 
and go to the foreground one mat and choose mask B movie. And then the foreground one mat channel is alpha. We can go to foreground one twixtered and add the mask to feather it into the base layer. Now we can turn the visibility of the top half on so we can see them together. We check to see how it's working with the base layer and we can still adjust the mask until it blends well. Now we can do a RAM preview and see that playback. It looks good except for this one area in the background. We can use the track points to help refine this area a little more. The track points are also in Twixter Pro. We have up to 12 points and they are also reusable. We can set up four points to the edges of this shape. This is a good place to track because there are definable edges that can be tracked. We set up the four points and tell them to use the main BG layer for tracking. Then we can do a RAM preview and see that now the background area is tracking and staying with the background and not moving with the foreground layer. That will make the whole thing work better. Now we can see the final result with all the twixtered shots in context and a color correction added too.